wanted to be found. Now I shall have vengeance on Thunder Totem. And you! Hey there, welcome. Cold Stare here and I'm back with another World of Warcraft Mage Tower guide. Today we are revisiting the Beast Mastery Mage Tower challenge. Revisiting because of my first video for the uh, Beast Mastery Mage Tower challenge. I felt like I missed a few things, thought I could do a better job at it, so... Let's go ahead and get started. So pets, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you come in with scale hides. Scale hides have a special ability called scale shield where they take half damage for 12 seconds. That's definitely gonna help with their survivability as they are taking the brunt of most of the damage throughout this entire challenge. Now, as far as gear goes, there's really only one piece of gear I'm gonna recommend you get, but uh, we'll talk about that more at the end of the video. Also, I wanted to mention that I recorded this right before the raid and Mirdrasil was released and Hunter's Mark didn't yet debuff the target and make them take more damage, so that's why I didn't have that on. Anyway, let's begin. So, uh, Tugar and Jormog, they both have to die for us to succeed at this challenge. Jormog begins the fight with nine stacks of fell-hardened scales, so he's taking almost no damage. We have to knock those scales off. That means for now we're going to focus most of our damage on Tugar. He's going to occasionally cast Fell Burst at our pets. We need to interrupt that or we'll one-shot them. He will also sometimes channel Earthquake. That makes rocks fall down uh, from the ceiling and those really hurt. So we want to try and avoid those. Now, these uh, Bile Spitter Eggs come up. This is the one piece of gear that I'm going to recommend you get, and that's the Ravage Seed Pod. It's a trinket that's on a one-minute cooldown and it's perfect for managing those. Every time they come up, you walk over them, you use the trinket, it drops a desecrated area, it gives you leech if you stand in it, and it does great AoE damage. So anyway, you also notice that Jormog's underground charging us. We need to lure him into those rocks by the cooking pot to knock off those fell hardened scales, right? Because like I said, he starts the fight taking almost no damage. That's why we're focusing on Tugar. Now, occasionally these fell surge totems also pop up. Uh, they go down real easy, but if they get their cast off, it's a very long stun, so make sure you uh, don't miss those. We also want to interrupt Jormog's sonic scream anytime we can, because that hurts. Now, you'll see here, I missed an interrupt on Tugar, and that one shot my pet. It's okay. You just resurrect your pet. Now, he might train you for a little bit after that, but just use a defensive, and eventually your pets will get aggro back. See, he's already back on my pets there, so don't panic. Now we continue to lure Jormog into these rocks. This is super important, right? It's really easy and just the chaos of the fight, paying attention to everything to forget about luring him into the rocks. The less scales you knock off when he's under the ground, the longer this fight's gonna take. And, and that's of course just gonna meet a greater chance of you dying. So anyway. Uh, continuing to interrupt the sonic scream anytime we can. If you're ever in a position where you only have one interrupt and two guards casting fell burst and Jormog's casting sonic scream, always interrupt two guard because his hits much harder and it will almost certainly uh, one shot your pet every time. So Jormog's now at four scales. That means we can start doing some chip damage to him. He's still taking 40% less damage, but that's okay. We, we need to do some damage because the whole key to this fight is bringing down uh, Tugar and Jormog as close together as we can. Because when one dies, the other enrages. So uh, I'm gonna recommend as Beast Mastery Hunter in here that you try and bring down Tugar first, if you are, if you can't bring them down at the same time. Because if you defeat Jormog first, when Tugar's enraged, he absolutely chews through your pets so fast and then he'll just come after you and, and you're not gonna stay alive for very long. So anyway, uh, when Jormog is enraged, the Sonic Scream is a little bit easier to manage because we have four interrupts, right? And we can kind of just cycle between those. But ideally, you're going to bring them down as close together as you can. So once most or all of the Fellhardened Scales are off Jormog, that's your time to Primal Rage, use Potion. It's time to do as much damage as you can on him. And that's also the point now where we're going to try and... We're going to try and cleave them down when they're together, right? And then when... Uh, when... Jormog is underground. This is now where you kind of have to make a decision. Very often in this challenge, at this point in the match, you will now have to start almost slowing your DPS on Tugar, right? Because again, we're trying to minimize the amount of time either one of them is enraged. It seems counterintuitive, I know, but do not be afraid to pull back and slow your damage on Tugar. Just continue to interrupt them. Uh, once all the fell hardened scales are off Jormog, when he goes underground, now it's just a matter of avoiding him, right? So see, we now focus back onto Jormog.
And since he has a lot more health, we're going to mostly focus on him for now, right? Again, trying to play that balancing game, keeping their health as close together as we can. Once their health bars are, are relatively close, we can cleave more. But while Jormog's up, mostly focus on him. And then if, Jormog, if Tugar, excuse me, if his health is low, when Jormog's underground, we're just pulling back and we're just kind of hanging out. See, my pet dies multiple times in this challenge. It's not a big deal. It's really not. Just resurrect it. Pop a defensive if you need to. The pet will always get aggro back. It's no worries. Now, continuing to use our Ravage Seed Pod, I sometimes see uh, comments on the internet that kind of mock using it I, as if it trivializes this scenario. I don't, it doesn't. You'll see in the damage recount. It's not absurd damage in any way. It's just the perfect trinket for managing the file spitters. That's why I advocate it for so much. Uh, we're always remembering to take out the Fell Surge Totem. Never forgetting about that. Just avoiding uh, Jormog till he's back up. And this right here should be our final push. This is where their health bar is pretty close together. We can cleave them down. And just like that, they die. That right there is exactly what you're aiming for. Both of them falling over exactly the same time. Uh, if there's only one thing you take away from this, it's minimizing the amount of time they're in rage and just surviving. That's my biggest advice for uh, surviving this challenge. So. But anyway, yeah, that's it. That's the Beast Mastery Mage Tower challenge done. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below and I'll try and respond as quick as I can. Here's a damage breakdown if you want to check that out. Uh, you see the fourth one there, that's Infested Ground. That's our Ravage Seed Pod Trinket. Doesn't trivialize the challenge at all. Just a good trinket for managing the ads. If you want to stick around, we're going to cover the gear next. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Right, so gear breakdown. Here's the Ravage Seed Pod you hear me talk so much about. Super easy to get, drops off the first boss of the Legacy Raid, Emerald Nightmare. Just keep changing difficulties till you get it. It has a good drop rate. Uh, Harlan's Loaded Dice, I have the standard tier uh, embellished pieces, Titanic Signet and the Elemental Lariat, and the tier set from Avarice. But hear me out, don't feel like you have to have any special gear. You could come in here with, with heirloom gear as long as it was 120. It's just about wearing them down. It's not a DPS race, it's a survival challenge. So anyway, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>